Hi everyone, form screen in Power Apps is one of the most powerful feature, but it's very simple to use, but still I see many people struggling. One of the most common questions that I get, and this recently came up in one of the comment of my other video is, hey, I'm using this form screen, but am I getting, why am I getting blank screen? Why is my screen empty? So I created this video to help you understand how to use form screen in Power Apps for new scenario, new item scenario or edit scenario and also understand why you get the blank screen and how to fix that. So let's get started. Here is a blank app. It doesn't have anything right now other than this blank screen. I'm going to insert a new screen which is a form type. So form screen here. Uh, so Power Apps is adding this form screen and as you will see, you'll get an, a screen which has a form as you can see in this left side view, screen and form, but it doesn't show anything, which is fine. That is expected because it's not connected to any data. So let's connect it to some data, but what data? So let's con uh, use some data source. So we have a lot of connectors. <clears throat> For my environment, I'm going to use one SharePoint connector that I have here. This is my SharePoint environment. Uh, it's going and finding in the SharePoint site, uh, recent sites. So I think I'm going to use communication site. I have a list here called issue tracker. It's a very simple test list and I just added it here. So now my app has this data source. So uh, let me go back to this form <clears throat> in the tree view I'll go to the screen and go to edit form and for data source property of this form by the way this form screen means Power Apps created a form and bunch of other things for you like label some buttons to help you you could have just inserted form control also in a blank screen the concepts are the same so anyway for this form I'll go and select the data source issue tracker list that we just added. So should it show the fields at this time? Because now we have connected this form to the data source. Uh, and if we choose the fields right, it should be all fine, right? Not quite. Let's see how it works. So good news is that now for the form, we have all these fields by default Power App selected these fields for us. Uh, we can always choose to delete some, but for now, let's leave it all like that. But still, it's all empty. Why is that? So there's the answer to that is there's one property that you have to set for this is called items, item, sorry. So you have to be careful about two properties. Data source is the table name. And item is the particular record that you want to show in the edit mode. So one thing to know before you think about date uh, uh, item, each form has two modes. As you can see, default mode. In this case, actually three modes to be precise, edit, new and view. By default, when I inserted this form screen, it created this form in the edit mode. What that means is in this view, you can open, you can open a record, put a record in the form to edit it. That means make changes. Uh, and for that to happen, you have to set two properties. One is data source. That is the table. So list in this case, but it could have been a table in SQL or your common data service. The second property you have to be careful about is item and that should be it and after that as you can see this button on the select of that says that submit form and form name so that means whatever changes you make when you press on this button it submits that means those changes are sent to database or data source list sharepoint list in this case for saving and there's other useful properties here for this form so if you go back to form is 
on success what do you want to do that means if the data is saved successfully what do you do what do you do if it fails and things like that so all right so we talked about these concepts that we need an item but how do we find an item one very simple way just to illustrate the concept is you can just say first first means from this table just get the first record just to see whether it works or not and when i do that you will see that if it all works fine you see that from this issue tracker data source my first item in this list is already populated here so it's no longer empty now so we know that this method of putting the item works but is this what we want all the time because we want to edit the item that we select not the first item first item was just to help us see if it works or not so how do we get that so for that what i'm going to do let me go back to this form go to item and for now i'm going to delete it again and we'll find better way to choose the right item to show in the edit form so i'll go back to my first screen which is empty right now and I'm going to put one gallery control. Uh, and this gallery control, I'm going to connect to the SharePoint list so that I, I see all the data in that list item. So for that, I have to change the data source to the issue tracker and Power Apps automatically decided what are the right fields and they work fine for these purposes so that's good it's a very simple list which has only four items what i want to do is when i click on this button uh, which is like a um, arrow i don't know right facing arrow then i want to go to the second screen and whatever item i have selected from here should be filled up here for editing all right so let's do that uh, for that I'll go to this button control that I already got from my gallery and on, on select of this I'm going to say navigate and if you saw my navigate video you will know what to do so navigate means you are asking power apps to navigate to some other screen in this case name of the second screen so screen 2 and what animation you want i don't want any animation and that's it so it takes me to the second screen on second screen now for this form that i have for items for item sorry many times i say items it's for item i need to use the item that we selected from the gallery of the first screen so what can i do just say gallery one and gallery as you know the name of the gallery is available all through the app so it's not limited to the screen where the gallery is so i said gallery one dot selected so we want to get the selected item dot i i think that's it that's all we need dot selected item so whatever we select from here so far maybe we have selected just the first one so it's getting the first item and we'll test it again what we also want to do is maybe here uh, I will navigate back to the first screen. I could have used back formula, but for now I'll be more explicit and say I want this to go back to screen one. So if I want to go back, I can cancel and go back there. And I don't have to do anything here by default. This button already has the code that says submit form edit form one edit form is this form so whatever changes we make here will go to the database in this case SharePoint list the last thing that I want to do here is on edit form on on success so that means if it's all filled successfully I want to navigate back to the first screen so this is a very basic thing that I did. Ideally, I should have also handled the error, but I'm not doing that for now in the interest of time. Uh, why is, okay, yeah. 
so I need let's say I need fade okay so let's go back and test it so let's go back to screen one let's say we selected third issue and if we did everything right yep so as you can see now this form has the third item I can go back without making any changes and it's fine let's say I second the select uh, select the second issue I get here let's make a very minor change let's just delete this number two here and save it and see what happens yes that change happened so this is about edit uh, form when you want to select some item and make some changes and make sure when you come to this edit screen you have this pre-filled and not empty so that's for edit how about inserting a new item what do we do that the same edit form and edit screen is helpful there there are two ways you can do that one is for this screen of this form you can you can dynamically decide depending on how what you want to do you can decide the mode of this so remember we talked about default mode and say it's either edit or new depending on how you come from here so let's say on this first screen we have we insert a button or icon uh, yeah here's the icon and we put an icon here um, and with, let's say if the user clicks on this then we want user to uh, add the item if the user clicks on this we want user to modify the item now so on the click of this you could have said that change the mode of this form to new but for this video I'm going to keep things simple and insert another form screen and use that for new entry so I'll go to new screen form and now this new screen also has the gallery uh, sorry also has the form for this form I'm going to collect connect it to the same data source which is issue tracker but this time I let it take some time to connect it to the data source okay so this time I change the default mode to new so that it knows that I have to do this in the new mode and on this I'll just say navigate back to screen one because I'll be coming from screen one don't want any animation okay so from the first screen I'll click on this add button and say navigate to screen 3 and I don't want any animation here so let's see what happens here so now I started this we already tested the edit part let's say user clicks on new button comes to this screen uh, we will not fill all the fields power apps has already done a nice job for us so let's just make use of that so I'll say fifth issue um, fifth issue this is fifth issue maybe select some priority uh, these are all the great things that power apps already does for us let's say this is in progress and maybe we can leave it at that and see if it lets us save it so it's doing something it took me back here and the fifth issue is saved here the reason we saw that this first came to blank screen is because although we submitted here but we did not say anything what happens after this is successfully submitted so let's fix that as we did for the edit scenario let's go to form on success we'll do the same thing navigate to the first screen and 
just say this and we should be good here let's test it again all right so let's go back to uh, why is it coming in the new one okay so there's another thing that you have to do for the new form is for the item property we talked about data source for the item it's a good practice to say default defaults of the type of record so what that tells is when it comes here for this form it knows that for this data source that means for this table insert a record that takes defaults of this so that tells us that you have to do it in a new mode so let's do this hopefully that should fix the problem so click on this now it's not looking empty which is great so defaults fix the problem so let's say sixth issue this is sixth issue priority let's say normal status let's say blocked and try to save it and this time it did not show me an empty screen it went to the first screen where it has list of the issue and as you can see all these issues are here or edit is working so I made a mistake while typing not a mistake but inconsistency so let's fix it so edit is working or new is working and we're all good so to summarize we said a lot couple things to remember a for your edit form or for any form it's important to know that forms have this mode that tells us whether it's in edit mode or new mode or default mode form has an uh, important property called data source that tells which table it is connected to then form has another important property that you should not forget is called item that tells which particular item you want to edit or view now if it is in the new form that means if you're inserting a record like we saw here default mode is new for you to get it right say defaults and the name of the table or the data source type another important action to take advantage of is on success that means what do you do when it is successfully submitted so that this button that has submit form when it is successful in submitting this the information of this form what do you do so that's what you say in on success I did not do this in this video but you can also take advantage of on failure so if there's any error you can use this to display the error message to the user so hope you found this useful if you have any questions or comments please leave them as comments below this video was brought to you by cloud attica if you like our videos please like share and subscribe for any questions or help leave a comment down below or email us at hello at cloudattica.com thank you for watching